Yep. Hi, my name is Pete Sloan. I'm the pulmonary director at Union Memorial Mester Hospitals. Today, I'm going to ask James Tucker, one of our respiratory therapists, to demonstrate our McKay ventilator. It's a servo U. We're going to stick to the practical aspects of what a clinician should be looking for when they see someone on this ventilator. How can they get some good data out of the ventilator? Let's go ahead. Take uh, one. We'll start with the no. servo market Wait, ventilator. Let's start uh, one more time. Start with the servo market ventilator. This is the standby machine uh, screen when you go into the ventilator. When you see it, it should automatically be in standby. Just to start out, these are the pre-use checks. They should all be done. These are our settings to show if it is a adult or a pediatric patient, invasive or non-invasive, and pressure control mode is the start mode I have set on this ventilator. You can change the mode from here to here. So we'll start right up in pressure control mode. We'll start right up in pressure control mode. The machine started. Currently we're on a test lung, so it should do all the ventilation for us. On the left side of the machine, there is some settings that we can control. Um, first, we'll go over this as the alarm silence button if we need it. Um, our modes, we can adjust in the mode screen. We are not gonna go over the standby, the alarms at this time. I will show you some maneuvers later. This is the graph on pressure control that we're currently using. The bottom half is the quick settings that the vent is currently in and we can extend it to get some extra settings. And on the right is what the patient is doing on the machine. You can also extend that to get some extra settings. We will not be going over the extra settings. In the modes, like I said, we started in PRVC mode. Just to take it a little slower, we'll hit the mode button instead of the controlling at the bottom. In pressure control, we have the oxygenation, we have the PEEP, we have the respiratory rate, and we have the delta pressure control or pressure control above the PEEP. So with these two combined, it'll give you a peak inspiratory pressure. Those are the general settings. We have some eye times and some trigger times. We'll just accept this mode, which we're currently in. Other ways to access those settings are at the bottom of the screen. Generically, oxygen, the PEEP, the respiratory rate, and the pressure control above PEEP, and we can extend it to see the more advanced settings. Those are the settings that this patient is on. At a rate of 15, the patient is breathing a rate of 15 because this is a test lung. So on this right side, we have the airway pressure showing in orange. We have the respiratory rate, the eye time showing in green, and we have the tidal volumes and minute ventilation showing in light blue. This little column at the bottom right is on every mode of our ventilators. Um, the therapist can put in some patient data to give you a predicted or ideal body weight, and it will calculate the tidal volume over the ideal body weight. For this mode, um, if you want a larger tidal volume, we will increase the pressure. If you want a, le a lower tidal volume, we will decrease the pressure. Can you turn the lights on? On this mode, when the pressure, when the patient has more resistance and the pressure is limited, the tidal volumes will decrease. If the patient does not have that resistance, the pressure should return back to where it was previously. The volume. The volume, sorry. The volume will return back to where it was previously. Um, so that's our main concern with the pressure control mode and compliance. It will affect it and limit the tidal volume since you can only set the pressure and you cannot set the tidal volume. So our next mode we'll go over. We'll go right to the mode screen because this is the only place. This will show our settings, but at the left, we can change the mode here. We'll go from pressure control to volume control next. In our control modes, we have four control modes. We'll go to volume control. Um, you can adjust the settings before you accept. We can adjust to whatever we want. The easiest way to adjust is down or low, or we can use a scroll bar at the bottom to quickly adjust it. Hit accept, and then we'll accept this mode. It is now on volume control. Again, you have the quick access bar at the bottom. It'll show the oxygenation, the PEEP, the respiratory rate and the tidal volume, and you can extend it to get some more settings like inspiratory time and a pause, uh, inspiratory pause, and some extra settings at the end. We will not be going over. Or you can also hit the modes button and go back into volume control to see the whole screen displayed up top. Um, on this mode, you can control the flow with the flow pattern, and then we'll show you what it looks like if you limit the. Um, the volume with this, uh, the patient's volume. If this patient's compliance decreases and they can't breathe in, the tidal volume gets limited if this peak airway pressure goes off. 
Just do it gently. Just gently. So we'll take a breath or two um, again on its own at a tight of volume a little less for this test lung. So at a tight of volume of 400, the peak airway pressure is 24. Gentle. With a little resistance, the volume remains the same, but the peak airway pressure increases. Okay, take it off so we can see one more time. Just let go. And now the peak airway pressure is dropping again to where it was previously at 24. And that is that mode. Again, you can extend the carrot and get some more settings, but we will not be going over them at this time. We'll go into the next mode that we'll address, is that is the pressure regulated volume control mode, or PRVC. PRVC is servos patented, so it is similar to VC plus on the 840s. In the PRVC mode, it's almost identical to the front screen on the volume control mode. It has oxygen, PEEP, respiratory rate, and tidal volume. And the same when you extend it, you do not have the plateau anymore, but you still have the inspiratory time. You cannot control the flow um, as much or the flow pattern because in this mode, the flow is dictated by the patient. So this mode is a little bit different than volume control that you are not giving 400 tight of volume through this ventilator. The machine predicts off the last breath how much pressure is needed to reach 400. If the patient is more resistant, you might need more pressure to reach 400. If the patient is pulling and pulling in the zone flow, you might need less pressure to hit 400. So the machine automatically controls the flow to reach this targeted tight of volume of 400. Want to demonstrate? And we'll... Lights. Lights. And lights. So in this mode, when I add a little resistance to the peak area pressure of 24, the tidal volume will initially drop. If I can keep that resistance steady, the machine should provide more pressure to try to reach the tidal volume of 400. So the machine gave a lot more airway pressure, that's why the pressure went up to 29 to reach that tidal volume of 400. It's targeting that tidal volume. No, when I release, like the volume goes up because it delivered the same amount of pressure for the last few breaths, but it should try to titrate the pressure going in again to reach the tidal volume targeted of 400. So it's going down to 25. The tidal volumes are still too large at 443. So it cut the pressure to 24. It still sees the volumes are a little bit high, 411, so it might cut the pressure one more time. Or not. But it's, yeah, 23, there it is. It's probably gonna be happy here at 23. So as things change, the machine adjusts after the change to readjust and get back to the targeted tidal volume. Thanks, James. Again, extended screen. We're not going over that. We can extend the screen and see more graphics, uh, details again and data, but we are not going over all the data at this time. So those are the three standard modes in control, and bi-level is our fourth mode, or bi-vent, or APRV. In this mode, unlike some of the other types of bi-level, or bi-vent, uh, or APRV, it does not have a respiratory rate. In this mode, we have a oxygen percent, we have a PEEP, and we have a time at PEEP. Then we have a pressure high, and then we have a time at pressure high. So controlling the time at pressure high and the time at pressure low, we would get a breath rate delivered. So if it's two and two, that's a total cycle time of four, which would leave me with 15 respiratory rate and an IDE of one to one. Um, besides that, the other um, settings on the by then is pressure support. We can deliver a set pressure support above PEEP and we can deliver a set pressure support above PEEP high. If the patient breathes at any point in the cycle, they will get the pressure sort based on what we dictate and the pressure support of PEEP high and the pressure support of PEEP column. We will hit accept and just like all the other modes, the standard settings will display here and the advanced settings will display if you hit the carrot to show you more.
since the patient's not spontaneously breathing, is there a test too. lung? Since the patient's not spontaneously breathing, it just looks like almost pressure control. But if I take a breath, if I take a breath, it'll show that I'm taking a breath here. That breath was at time low, so it good, should give me some pressure support above PEEP, just five. If I take a breath when the machine is at time high, it'll give me four of pressure support above PEEP high. Again at high, a breath at low, breath at high. And then we'll go back into the modes to show you the by by level settings one more time. Since this does not have a respiratory rate, to adjust this respiratory rate, you'll have to control the time high or the time low or time at peak. If you want an inverse ratio, you would increase the time high. It's currently at two to two, so if you wanted it two seconds high and two seconds low, if you wanted it inverse, you could go say to six seconds at high and two seconds at low would give you a three to one ratio. And then that breath rate would change to only eight breaths a minute. And that is basically how you make adjustments on the bi-level or bi-vent or APRV. The other modes we have on this machine that we'll go over is SIMV. SIMV is um, synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. We can be on SIMV with pressure control as the base rate, pressure regulated volume control as the base rate, or volume control as the base, base rate. Base breath type. Brace, base breath type, yes, correct. Brace, base breath type. Um, we will just go over SIMV and volume control. We will not be going over auto mode at this time. And SIMV volume control, the settings are almost identical to volume control, except it has these extra pressure support settings in. And that is for if the patient takes a breath um, above the rate that we set. So the pressure support above PEEP is a setting that we change and the flow and all those other waveforms and all the PEEP and respiratory rate is all the same just yeah, before like you on. accept it, why don't you make PS5 and demonstrate it with the lights on. PS5. Press and we're going to turn the lights on. And let's see how that looks with the patient interacting with the machine. That's called an interactive mode. So we're starting with no interaction. Mm, that's I have the wrong setting. So we're starting with 15 breaths a minute with the patient not interacting. Every four seconds, there's a breath, here it goes. And now we'll show why it's called interactive and how IMV works. So Jim's going to pull in between. When you pull, it'll show this white mark on the ventilator. Pull slow for a long time. Take a breath first, and then I'll pull on the next breath. There we go. That's what I wanted to show. So James pulled gently for a long time, and the machine followed his lead and gave him a nice long breath as long as he was making an effort to go in. There he goes. Oh, he did two screens. Do one more. Next one. A nice, long, slow breath. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So when you are on these modes, if you do have a long breath and the patient breathes outside of the range of the waveform, you can manually go in and adjust the waveform. They should automatically adjust based on the patient. If this patient's breathing shallow, this waveform should shrink or increase if the volume gets larger. Or you can manually go in and adjust any of the waveforms by pushing and holding down. And we're talking about adjusting the scale. The scale of the waveform, The yes. scale of the waveform. If you hit automatic, it should automatically adjust to optimize the range, or you can manually change it as well touch anywhere else on the machine to accept the change. The same thing can be done to the flow. To the rate, yeah, to the rate, yeah, exactly. All righty, um, so that is on SIMV. We will now change the mode to spontaneous or pressure support mode. We are not gonna go over the volume support or NAVA. We are gonna go right into pressure support. When we hit the pressure support, 
Everything below the line is our backup rate. These machines have a backup rate. If a patient becomes apneic for an extended period of time, we have that set on 20 seconds. Since this patient is in pressure support, if they go apneic, the backup rate is pressure control. So that's what these settings are down here. The normal pressure support settings though are the oxygen, the PEEP, and the pressure support above PEEP. Those are the generic settings that we will cover. When we accept the mode, the I'm machine sure will not breathe. We will have to ventilate for this because it's a test lung. So just the slightest interaction, the machine should give me the pressure port of 14. When I do take a breath, it will show on the screen. Now take a nice, long, slow breath. There we go. So you can take any breath you want. As long as you're making an effort, it's keeping the pressure up. Whenever you stop, the machine realizes it and cuts the breath off. So you can see James is doing some quick breaths that are small and then some slow, deep breaths. You're really breathing spontaneously with support. So if we extend, you can cut us off one more time, please. If we breathe faster, if we extend the menu, it'll show all the, uh, the backup rate and all those alarms or we can look at it at the generic screen. Again, we can go into modes and look at it that way to see what we're on and hit accept. On this mode in general, these are what the patient is doing. If I extend this menu, the one thing I'll go over with is this SBI. Um, a lot of um, ventilators will call it a RISB or rapid shallow breathing index. This machine, since it's copyrighted, uses SBI for shallow breathing index. So with rapid ventilation, rapid shallow ventilation, that number will increase. With long steady ventilation, it will decrease. And that covers our generic vent modes. And one more thing we'll go over with, we will revert to a PRVC or AC mode, so I don't have to bag the patient. Um, we'll quickly go over the maneuvers button. So under the maneuvers, under static measurements, there are two buttons you can press and hold to get a plateau and a total peep. If I hold the inspiratory button in until it beeps, it will tell me what the plateau is at 24. Next, if I hold that expiratory button in until it beeps, it will give me the total peep. Um, these two um, values can be used to calculate the static compliance, but the machine, the ventilator will do that automatically for you. And that is it for our ventilator. Okay, can you turn the lights on? Yay, thank, thank you. you, James. Thank you.